Expensive, rare, complex and heavy. That's what I was thinking about when I was thinking about anamorphic lenses. But a month ago, I found in a yard sale for $30 this amazing small anamorphic lens. I was so lucky to find this lens for so cheap and now I really want to shoot anamorphic footage. The world of anamorphic lenses is pretty difficult to understand, so I asked my friend Tito Ferrandens for some help when he came to Paris. He's the number one expert in the world about shooting with anamorphic lenses. I'm Tito Ferrandens and I'm in Paris right now, so I took the time to meet Mathieu and we are here to talk about anamorphic. Uh, first of all, what is anamorphic? anamorphic comes from the word anamorphosis, which means to change the dimensions dimensions of an image in one axis, either the y-axis or the x-axis. And for photography, these are lenses that squeeze the image. So you're basically taking a wide field of view and squeezing that image onto a smaller sensor. The whole thing started in World War One, I, I believe, here in France when they used this to increase the fuel of view of tanks so they the soldiers could be safe inside the tank and have a wider field of view than this tiny porthole that they used to look at their surroundings uh, later this evolved into film lenses and then it made its way to hollywood where hollywood was losing ground for television so they needed something that would make it make films on at movie theaters more interesting than watching them on TV and the whole thing about TV is the aspect ratio is like four by three at the time and theaters had the same uh, image size so they brought on these anamorphic lenses all the way from France to make create what was going to be called cinemascope at a laboratory in France famed Sorbonne optical scientist Henri Chrétien demonstrates the anamorphoscopic lens for the cinemascope system to Spiros P. Scurus who acquires the world rights to the invention for his company. A revolutionary development, CinemaScope throws realistic images on a screen two and a half times larger than the present screen with a third dimensional illusion, audience participation and greater enjoyment. In acquiring it, 20th Century Fox this week changed its entire production technique for all of its principal pictures and started the production of Lloyd C. Douglas's famed story, The Robe in CinemaScope. Cinemascope says Mr. Scurus is destined to bring a new era in the motion picture theater and provide greater service to mankind. Basically doubling on the aspect ratio of the image and creating this sense of uh, epicness to, to the picture. It's also like how our eyes perceive the world. We see more horizontally than vertically. So there's this whole thing going on to make people more interested and more in immersed into anamorphic footage. Note how everything is elongated, compressed. Yet when corrected, these pictures shown on the new curved Miracle Mirror screen expand two times sidewise, allowing the viewer the full range of the human eye. The conclusion of a gallant quest to capture the ultimates of dimension. I first became interested in anamorphic lenses back in 2012 and I was finishing my degree at University of Sao Paulo back in Brazil and everybody was shooting with like Canon L and really modern Zeiss primes and zooms and like okay everything cool but everything kind of looks the same so I wanted to find lenses that made image a little bit different or more interested or more interesting or like that maximized my use of the sensor and that's what anamorphic does it fits more footage onto the sensor so i started buying lots of random lenses and i definitely overpaid on most of them because there was not enough information online on how to put together an anamorphic rig and I spent a lot of time like researching and learning about it but the main reason I got interested in it was to make my projects have a different look. It is almost too late to buy anamorphics for cheap 
Uh, there's a few options around like the SLR Magic 13340 compact which is tiny and it goes for I think it's under less than 500 bucks right now. Uh, it's a good starter lens, it's 1.33. There's also, there's usually a lot of Isco Ultra Stars and Simulexes on eBay that you can find for 200 or 300 bucks. And if you really wait and look hard enough, you can still find good deals on like Koa BNH or 8Z. You can even find Escoramos for cheap, uh, Sancors. There's lots of options, it just takes a lot, a lot of time and dedication in the search to find good deals these days. If you want to start anamorphic shooting, the first thing you must do is go to my blog and read the whole anamorphic on a budget guide. It's like 100 pages long. It shows you what are anamorphic adapters, how do they work, their types, what are diopters, what are clamps, uh, how do all these things come together, the effect that the taking lenses have because you need a regular spherical lens and then in front of it you need the anamorphic block. So I would say if you want to start right away, go to the blog and read. Uh, my channel has a lot of content, it's like three years of videos on various adapters. And then go to eBay, go to Craigslist or whatever the option is in where you live and start looking for good deals. Don't think that the first lens you're going to get is going to be the one that you're going to use forever. I've had way over a hundred lenses through my experience with anamorphics and I've stuck with one. So it's always a constant process of, oh yeah, I can improve this by getting this lens and I can, there's always a trade-off. You're always losing something to improve at something with a different lens. And it's, it's keeping in mind which one fits better your shooting style. So it's just read, study, practice, don't spend too much money. I think you got a great lens. I think you got the, the Sankra 16D is an excellent starter lens. It's not the most compact setup, but it gives you two times stretch and beautiful, beautiful purple bluish flares that are similar to Panavision. So good there. Uh, it vignettes rather easily on full frame. So you're probably going to have to stick with 85 millimeters or longer taking lenses, but because of compression, you're getting the 45, uh, 42 and a half millimeter field of view. And if you're cropping to 239 or like CinemaScope, you can probably get away with a shorter taking lenses, maybe 65 mil. Uh, and it's a lens that does not require a lot to work. It's not super heavy. It's not huge. It's, it's a great starter lens. I have a Canon FD 85 millimeter f1.8 on my uh, Sony full-frame camera and I have the uh, anamorphic lens Sencor 16D uh, so with a clamp okay so now the taking lens and the anamorphic lens are connected So we put on a monitor in order to align the anamorphic squeeze, otherwise you're going to have tilted vertical lines and that's not what you want. Uh, and the monitor is very useful at that. You can use flares and that's a cheap option but a monitor is always recommended. So you don't have to watch for squeezed footage. First I need to align the anamorphic lens I think. Maybe, yes, infinity here, infinity here, and maybe it's not perfect here, yeah, maybe here, and...
Uh, I hope this video helped uh, figuring out where to start with anamorphic. If you need more information and more tests and more footage, just check out my channel. There's a hundred and something videos there you can get from basic stuff all the way to very complicated concepts uh, involving anamorphic shooting. That's the sole purpose of the channel. And if you still need more, you can go to the blog and read even more content. So uh, I guess Mathieu's gonna start using his anamorphic lenses as well. So stay tuned and see what comes up here.